So what makes a developer better at security? Training, expertise, intrinsic intelligence, a certain personality trait, something else? We investigated this, and I'll show you what our data reports. Vulnerabilities keep increasing. And this seems like old news that we are tired to hear, right? Every time a security report is released. And the same hold vulnerabilities again and again and again. So this, this picture is from Monday. And you see buffer overflows, cross-site scripts. And there are three responses from the security and development community to the problem. Number one, blame the developer for lack of security education. So the rationale here is that there are plenty of guidelines and training available explaining the vulnerabilities, so there is no reason whatsoever for developers not to write secure code. Nah. And I think most of us here reject this response. Number two, security should be required from the beginning. Developers can write secure code if they are provided with the right resources, training, guidelines, tools. Much better, because the idea here is to curate the resources for developers, teach them instead of expecting them to go figure things out. But how easy it is to use those resources. Then comes response number three. Developers need usable resources to write secure code. And yes, and I think that most of us here or everybody here agree that that's the way to go. And the security community has been researching and developing for years now on usable resources to allow developers to write secure code. But vulnerabilities keep increasing. What if there's something else? some sort of missing ingredient for this recipe of secure code. Our hypothesis is that even with usable resources to write secure code, developers might still experience blind spots while coding, especially when using APIs. And these blind spots might lead to vulnerabilities. And here comes the central construct of my talk, an API blind spot, a developer misunderstanding or oversight when using an API function, which can lead to a violation of the recommended API usage with possible introduction of vulnerabilities. The classic example of a blind spot developers might have with APIs is string copy in C, which most of us here know can lead to buffer overflow attacks. To use this function correctly, developers need to add extra code that will handle a ray bounds violation. In a developer study, in a debrief from a developer study my group conducted a few years ago, a developer explained why he couldn't detect a buffer overflow vulnerability in the scenario he was work on, working on. He said, it's not straightforward that misusing string copy can lead to very serious problems. Since it's part of the standard library, it's not, it's, if developers will assume it's okay to use. It's not called unsafe string copy or anything, so it's not immediately clear that there is a problem there. This developer clearly experienced a blind spot while working with string copy. And this is not an anomaly, and it's not his fault. Blind spots are part of our making as human beings. Let me explain you why, with a real story, where experts, full of resources, experience blind spots in their profession with catastrophic consequences. Have you guys heard of Donnie Brasco? Donnie, or Joe Stone, was an FBI agent who infiltrated the New York Bonanno family for almost six years. He was an earner, friend, and confident of one of the most important couples in the family, Sonny Black. He was about to become a made man 
when the FBI needed to shut down the operation immediately because for obvious reasons, you need to kill someone. And the impact of the operation was immense. Indictments, convictions, the Bonanno family almost destroyed, the five families coming up with new rules to prevent this from ever happening again, and of course, a 500K contract on his life forever. But what's most interesting about this case is that over this period of six years, nobody in the family suspected or detected any of Donnie's vulnerabilities. And they were plenty. He needed to meet with his FBI contact agent twice a month in person. He needed to call his agent every few days and even FBI headquarters. He wore wires on several occasions. And every three weeks, he would visit his wife and daughters. And then you guys are thinking, weren't these mafia guys experienced? Yes. So here are some quotes from Joe Stone's autobiographic book. The first quote is by Lefty, a mobster instructing Donnie on the ways of the mafia. When you talk on the phone, you don't talk directly about what's going on because all the phones are tapped. Like most mobsters, Lefty was paranoid. There's agents everywhere. Because of their paranoia that there are bugs planted everywhere, mob guys always turn on the TV or radio to cover that conversation. And then you guys are thinking, aren't these guys experts in their profession? Profession, I mean organized crime. Yes. More quotes. Lefty was mafia 24 hours a day. He would never let his guard down. Sony was good at what he did. And then you're thinking, what does it have to do with developers? Well, I just explained an example in the context of the mafia, of course, where experience, resources, expertise do not constitute or did not constitute a foolproof armor in detecting or preventing vulnerabilities. What about developers attempting to prevent and detect vulnerabilities? Do experience, expertise, intelligence constitute a foolproof armor? Let's flip these mafia codes for a hypothetical developer scenario. Alice is paranoid about software vulnerabilities. She sees vulnerabilities everywhere. Because of his paranoia that software might always contain vulnerabilities, Bob always turns on diagnostic tools. Or John is about software security 24 hours a day. He would never let his guard down. And Mary's good at writing secure code. Don't you think these codes are plausible? Wouldn't you think that developers operating like this would always prevent and detect vulnerabilities? Well, our research group was curious about that, and we decided to investigate this empirically. We wanted to understand API blind spots from a developer's perspective, their perceptions about the code, their experience and expertise, their levels of cognitive functioning, their personality. Our study had three goals. One, determine developers' ability to detect API blind spots in code. Two, examine how developers' characteristics affect their capability. Three, explore how API function or programming scenario characteristics affect this developer's capability. And our study had five parts. The first part was a set of programming tasks in Java, or puzzles, as we call, that we asked developers to work on. Two was a demographics questionnaire. Three was a questionnaire on the developer's professional experience and expertise. Four was a cognitive assessment. And five, a personality assessment. We recruited developers from four countries, from different continents and cultures, US, Brazil, India, and Bangladesh. In part one, we created four sets of puzzles, where in each set, four puzzles involved API functions that were known to cause blind spots in developers. 
and two puzzles involved API functions that were innocuous. And the API functions with blind spots were selected among functions that were commonly reported in vulnerability databases and frequently discussed in developer forums. The sets were counterbalanced for an equal representation of I.O., string, and crypto function. Developers were randomly assigned to one of these four sets, and then we asked them questions about the scenarios. So here is an example of a puzzle with a blind spot on a string API. And this is the classic example where lack of data sanitation uh, can cause the execution of arbitrary code. So in this example, the function set date invokes run, which invokes runtime exec with an arbitrary string. And this is what we ask from the developers. Which of the following statements would be correct if set date method was invoked with an arbitrary string value as new date? If the string does not conform to date format, exception, the method cannot change the date. C, the method might do more than change the date. D, the return value of wait for is not interpreted correctly at line such and such. And E, the web application will crash. And of course, we were expecting developers to answer C, the method might do more than change the date. So here's a breakdown of our demographics. We had 109 developers who successfully completed all phases of our study. The majority of them being male professionals from the United States with an average of six years of programming experience. Uh, the majority of them had a computer science or computer engineering degrees, and almost half of them had a postgraduate degree. In part three, we asked developers uh, about their professional experience and expertise on a set of programming languages and programming uh, technologies and concepts. Our cognitive assessment, we used two instruments well known in the fields of psychology and neuroscience, the BTACT and the NIH toolbox. And these instruments uh, assess the following cognitive measures, processing speed, memory span, verbal fluence, short and long-term episodic verbal memory, and inductive reasoning. For personality assessment, we use Big Five, which is a self-reported questionnaire which measures the five personality traits. Well, what we found? Our first hypothesis was that developers are less likely to solve puzzles with blind spots than puzzles with innocuous functions. We found that the presence of a blind spot in the puzzle had a significant effect on the accuracy the developer had on answering security questions, thus supporting our hypothesis. And this effect was even more pronounced for I.O. APIs. So here in red, results that we found the statistical significance. And even more pronounced when the code had a high cyclomatic complexity, which is a metric in software engineering to measure, of course, the complexity of code. Our second set of hypotheses were that developers perceive puzzles with blind spots as more difficulty, less clear, less familiar, and with less confidence than puzzles without blind spots. Our data did not support this hypothesis in that the developers' perceptions did not differ as a function of presence of blind spots. Our third hypothesis was that Higher cognitive functioning in developers is associated with a greater accuracy in solving puzzles with blind spots. Again, our data did not support this hypothesis in that a higher level of cognitive functioning did not predict a higher ability in detect vulnerabilities. Our fourth hypothesis was that higher levels of professional experience and expertise in developers are associated with a greater accuracy in solving puzzles with blind spots. Yet again, our data did not support this hypothesis in that more experience and expertise did not predict a higher ability in detecting vulnerabilities. Finally, our fifth hypothesis was that higher levels of openness and conscientiousness 
in developers and lower levels of neuroticism and agreeableness are associated with greater accuracy in solving puzzles with blind spots. Openness has to do with being imaginative, curious, creative, and conscientious has to do with being careful, self-disciplined, reliable. So it's plausible to hypothesize that developers scoring high on the traits would do better at detecting vulnerabilities, right? On the other hand, uh, a lower score for neuroticism indicates a higher psychological stability, and a lower score on agreeableness usually indicates people that are highly suspicious of situations and things in general. And again, it's plausible to hypothesize that developers uh, 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 with these traits, they will do better at detecting vulnerability. Our data partially supported uh, the hypothesis in that we found that developers that scored high in openness, they indeed presented a, a higher ability to detect vulnerabilities with statistical significance. In summary, developers do have difficulties in finding vulnerabilities in code when they use API functions that cause them blind spots. And this effect is more pronounced for IO APIs and complex code. Perceptions of code do not predict greater accuracy in detecting vulnerabilities in code. And the same goes for higher cognitive functioning and higher levels of professional expertise. And finally, openness is associated with developers' ability in detecting vulnerabilities in code. So what? Our insights, the results of our study, provides insights for the software and API development community. API functions should be simple. They should assume that developers will not handle security issues. They should leverage large developer studies to prevent the introduction of blind spots in newly created functions. And they should document blind spots in legacy functions. Training and awareness should highlight that no developer is immune to blind spots, even experts, and that perceptions and gut feelings might be misleading. And finally, that developers should rely more and more on diagnostic tools. My last piece of advice is for the, the software development process. In many companies, the rationale is still is that developers should and must create secure functionality and that hiring experts will substantially increase software security. Our data indicates that this mindset might be misleading. Se functionality and security are two tasks that are highly cognitive demanding, and expecting an engineer to do both might be a zero-sum game, even for experts, meaning that time focusing on security is time away from functionality and vice versa. And in fact, functionality and security might be tasks that might require different types of mindsets and expertise. So the problem is then not an engineer not handling both, but actually a company not handling both. Fortunately, as we saw in Eros' presentation, it's become common now that companies now are uh, having separate teams for security and functionality, like blue teams that will uh, look at security aspects of the code and red teams that will challenge those aspects. And based on our data, we believe that this approach might be the most cost effective because there will always be a group of engineers whose primary task is to think about how an adversary can exploit the code and people with openness as a personality trait might be the most suitable to be part of the security team. I'd like to acknowledge my research collaborators and also NSF for funding this research. And thank you very much. <laughs>